Well, good evening and welcome to the technology panel where we sit at the intersection of technology and psychedelics. And of course, being a technology panel, as soon as you mention the T word, that's when it usually goes uh, wrong. We have a truly uh, international, if you include Europe, Canada and America panel uh, today. Um, so it gives me great pleasure to welcome Robin, Danilo, Tom and Nick. Um, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, technology. Um, some really interesting things are happening in psychedelic medicine and technology. We're going to be looking at apps. We're going to be looking at machine learning and we're going to be looking at computer games. Um, so without further ado, uh, I'm going to uh, introduce Robin and ask him to introduce himself and tell us a little bit about his journey into technology and psychedelics. Thank you, Richard. I'm Robin Arnott. I'm the founder of Andromeda Entertainment and uh, the lead designer on SoundSelf. I'm a technologist and have been for a very long time and um, really had my awakening experience through psychedelics and, and part of what that experience taught me, showed me and, and put me on a path with regards to is um, just that every, you know, it's not that you have the, the sacred stuff over here and the unsacred over here like uh, human institutions and technology. And I think we usually think of our technologies as being sort of unsacred, mundane, and even destructive. But I just had this recognition that our technologies not only can be sacred, but must become sacred. And that that's really an important mission of uh, uh, my generation. And so my work is in video games and taking psychedelic wisdom and finding ways to infuse video games with that psychedelic wisdom, not thematically, like a video game being about uh, oneness experiences, plant medicine and so on, but actually letting the plant medicines teach us how to make more soulfully true gaming experiences. So that's why wonderful. I am. Thank you, Richard. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to hand over to Danilo now. Um, uh, a little bit about yourself, please, and your company. Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Danilo Tomanovic. I'm based out of Toronto, Canada. Um, I'm the president founder of a company called Machine Learning Deep Dive. And this is a company which is focused on doing development and design in artificial intelligence, as well as education. I started off two years ago because I noticed that there was a gap of a particular type of AI practitioner that was missing. That is someone who understood how to model and then separately deploy models. So what does that look like? You have PhDs in mathematics, you know, and are thinking in terms of probabilities and they're really brilliant. And then you have some individuals that are front and back end designers and developers, but that combination was missing. And so, um, I've done, I've created a community here and a voice to essentially bring people together to start up new companies. And then as a result of that, um, which was separate outside of machine learning deep dive, um, that's when I started discovering individuals that were using machine learning in terms of pharmaceutical, right? Um, but specifically in terms of mental health. And so this idea of how is it, and especially now because we're in COVID times, mental health, our own mental health, and that is of our nearest and dearest, is really the greatest concern. I see that as, as definitely something that is shifted. And so um, I'm privy to a lot of different technology that is being applied in terms of pharmaceuticals um, that are looking at these data points, that are observing um, individuals. And so, you know, this space to me is exciting because Again, on the psychedelic side, it's only taking technology and, and essentially leveraging that strength into what? What are we ingesting? How is it affecting the chemistry of our minds, our sense of awareness, presence, all of these things? And so I'm excited to be a part of this panel and look forward to listening to uh, my uh, co-panelists here in terms of their insights. So, Thank you. Just before we sort of um, we, we move over to Tom, um, for those of you who are not familiar with um, sort of technology such as sort of deep learning, um, maybe Daniel, if you, if you were to step into a lift and uh, and we kept our socially distanced uh, uh, between each other, 
Uh, so, so, you, so you're in deep learning? What, what's, what's deep learning? Uh, how would you explain it to me in very, very simple terms? Well, deep learning, so there's this gentleman called Jeffrey Hinton, and he's referred to as the godfather of artificial intelligence. He's here in Toronto. He's a, he's a Brit that emigrated to Canada decades ago, and he's been at the University of Toronto focusing on how the mind works, specifically how do we make decisions and choices. And this has been the focus of his work for, for many, many years. And so this iteration of what we referred to as analytics previously with biases, and then came this idea of backpropagation, the idea that you have an image uh, and essentially we can uncover from that image file if this is a dog or if this is a cat. Deep learning is a term that he coined, which is again, his way of showing differentiation in the space. So just to give it, you know, just to make it sort of simple to everyone, you have AI and then you have machine learning and then within it, you have this subset, which is referred to as deep learning. But these are just new techniques that are being used in terms of um, pattern recognition, which is essentially everything that machine learning or artificial intelligence proposes itself to be. Uh, so, uh, Tom, um, we're going to move to you. Uh, tell us a little bit about your your, uh, your background and also your, your business, please. Great. Thanks, Richard. Um, so, me and my co-founder, Jay, were both part future concept designers at Jaguar Land Rover, and we both decided that we wanted to quit our jobs and try and search for something a little bit more impactful on the planet. Um, so, we set about trying to help people achieve freer and more fulfilling lives. Um, on our journey, we interviewed people from around the world and we tried to find out what that meant to them. Um, we narrowed that down and realized that for people to achieve these fulfilling lives, they needed to do, um, achieve successive personal growth cycles. All of, these, all of these personal growth cycles started with a point of inspiration. So we wanted to try and work out how we could target inspiration. Um, we focused on this topic, and one of the areas that was of particular interest was exploring your subconscious thoughts. We then went into doing a load of um, neuro research, looking into papers and understanding how people explore their subconscious thoughts in different ways, through meditation, through psychedelics, through shamanistic practices, through dreaming, through all these different ways. And we looked for commonality on the neuroscience of them. We then set about trying to work out how we could replicate that brain state, a target brain state that we created from it, using technology in a highly accessible way. We focused mainly on the idea of visual entrainment, using stroboscopic lighting to guide people into this state. And with the focus on accessibility, we've been targeting ways to try and make it very cheap and very accessible for people. So we developed, first of all, a group light experience of which 30 people can join in at once. And we've been running group events on that, which got shut down by COVID originally, but we've actually just started doing them again on very limited numbers. And our main focus at the moment has been trying to create an app, which uses the flashlight on the back of your phone to guide you into this deep altered state of consciousness, which we refined through thousands of EEG scans. And yeah, we're targeting that towards the personal growth side of things, trying to help people achieve these inspired states um, in a highly accessible way. So, in effect, you, uh, you you can put somebody into a kind of a near psychedelic um, mindset. Is that is that what you're working towards? Yeah, exactly. So, the sort of st the brain state that we can push people in towards is almost exactly in between deep meditation and classic psychedelics. So, people typically will always report this sense of detachment from ego, detachment from body, the dissolution of time. And we, the whole experience is done with eyes closed. And there are these sort of highly kaleidoscopic, colorful, closed eye visuals, which are conjured up from the subconscious mind and created that way. And we then guide people through intention setting and integration to turn this sort of visual experience into something more meaningful and impactful, which they can tra help transform their lives with. Thank you very much, Tom. And uh, Nick, um, um, great to hear from you. How are you I'm doing? Back. I'm Fantastic. doing amazing. Um, I'm Big really glad for you to be today. on with all of you. Yeah, um, we've officially launched our um, mental health platform on the iOS and Android store. Um, so feel free to check it out. We've been working on it for about a year. 
Um, it, it's really aimed at uh, increasing access to mental health professionals and um, allowing people to be more mindful of um, how their actions are, are affecting their mental health. So within MindLeap, you're able to track your mood, emotions, habits, and we actually have 30 um, very experienced and fully vetted integration specialists that can help people um, improve themselves and, and really integrate a psychedelic experience um, into actual changes in their lives. Fantastic. I'm based and in the, Vancouver. And, um, and the app is, and the app in, is yeah. Well, sorry, Richard, go ahead. No, I was going to say, and, and the app is available to download right now. Yeah, yep, it is. Fantastic. So uh, we have all of our panelists. We're going to talk about the importance of uh, technology and psychedelics. Uh, Daniel, I just want to uh, sort of jump over to you. First of all, we, uh, you know, we, we touched on uh, deep learning. Um, it's a mythology which is um, being used by you know some of the biggest uh, organisations in this category. People like Atai have put a, a focus on uh, on their deep learning programs. Why will deep learning um, prove to be a, or do you believe, a, a really important tool in, in psychedelic drug discovery? That's a great question. Um, the whole focus of deep learning is that we as researchers or as analysts have embedded our own biases. And the whole promise of deep learning is that there are certain patterns that we're able to uncover as a result of creating this, this robot, this machine, right? Which is observing the data, which is anal finding little bits and pieces and essentially is doing or mimicking what sort of the brain does, which is memorizes certain things and kind of brings it back when, when needed. The reason it's so, the reason it's so um, necessary in psychedelics is because as a subset of pharmaceutical, you know, we're always looking at doing uh, research and development as far as mindfulness, health, mental health, this idea of how do we become our best selves? And so the reason why deep learning is so necessary is that it essentially catapults this entire uh, professional group to an area where they now have a tool that wasn't readily available, they didn't quite understand it. And now all that information that they've had for many years, or even if it's short term, can now be applied in a way that, quite frankly, is uncovering new discoveries. In other words, think of it this way. A pharmaceutical company takes 10 years and a billion dollars of R&D in order to create a drug which essentially becomes approved by the government regulator. Deep learning will essentially take those 10 years and compress it into days. Wow. Right? So this is this is a pretty seismic change um, in the it's way a, that company. It's a quantum, it is a it's it's a it's 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 a quantum leap. I mean it is definitely um, a big shift. It's not a small shift. It's a much, much bigger shift. And so the necessary the necessity of using it when it comes to pharmaceuticals or sorry uh, psychedelics is how do we take, for instance, what Tom is doing, right? And combine this idea of how do I take a light which mimics this idea, which is hypnosis. Forgive me for, for kind of paraphrasing Tom, but you can correct me at, at any point. But then on the other side, I can monitor your heart rate, your blood pressure. I can actually have sensors on your skin to get a sense of if you're sweaty or not, if you're nervous or not. In other words, I can actually have a much more holistic approach in terms of understanding how my body and mind is, is, is being affected in a way that we never could before.